Using Google Recapture is one of the easiest ways to protect your Next.js site against spammers. I created a tutorial a few months ago using version 2. However, I didn't cover the server-side integration because most of the stuff on this channel is front-end focused. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to implement version 3, which the invisible version, so that there's a little less friction with your users, and we're going to verify it using an API route within Next.js itself. So let's jump over to the code and let's get started. Okay, so I'm here in VS Code in a new Next.js 14 application. I'm using TypeScript and Tailwind, by the way. The only thing of things I've done so far is I've cleared out the uh, homepage of all the boilerplate, as well as got rid of all the other boilerplate CSS that's not related to Tailwind. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the NPM packages that we need. So the first one is React Google Recapture version 3. So I'm going to install that, perfect. And then the next thing that we need is Axios. So I'm going to install the latest version of Axios as well. Perfect. Okay, so to get a reCAPTCHA public and private key, we're going to go to google.com slash reCAPTCHA slash about, and it will bring you to this page. If you type in reCAPTCHA on Google, this will come right up. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the v3 admin console. And since this is probably also your first time making one of these if you're watching this video, um, it will take you right to the form to register a new site. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to call this tutorial uh, v3. And then here you're going to get a choice of score based or challenge. The, in the other tutorial we did challenge, and this one we're going to do score based with version 3. And what we're going to do here is we're going to add the domains that we want to use um, for verification. So here, since I'm just doing it all within localhost, I'm just going to add localhost. Um, if you have, if you're, if this site's running in production or you're using it with something else, you're going to have to add the domain or recatch them will work. Um, so let's submit this, and here we go. Perfect. So now we have our uh, client side key and server side key. So let's jump back over to the code and we're going to input these. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create our environment variables. So what we want to do is in the root directory of our, our project, I'm going to create a file called environment.local. The local just means that's not going to be pushed to your GitHub and it will be ignored. And what we're going to do is we have to create a variable for both of our uh, public and private keys. So I'm going to do next public. That is the convention since next 13 that you want to, if, if you're willing to show the key on the client side where anyone can find it, you want to, you have to flag it with next public. And then I'm going to call it recapture uh, key. And I'm going to go over here, and this is for our servers, and this is, nope, this is our client side, and this is our server side. So I'm going to copy the client side key. I'm going to put that right here. And then I'm going to go here, and I'm going to call this recapture secret key. And then I'm going to copy the secret key, and I'm going to paste it right here. So what I did is I just created a very basic form that we'll use for our recapture submissions. Um, I'll, I'll just quickly walk you through it. You might want to pause the video here and if you're coding alongside, uh, write all this down or check my GitHub repo. But I just have a use client directive because we need to render the JavaScript on the client side. The reason for that's a little bit out of the scope of this video, but just add use client to the top if you don't understand. Then what we, are doing is we're just creating a form that asks for first name, last name, an email, and then we have a submit button. And we also have here, I created a stateful variable called submit, and this will show a status of submission once we have our um, recapture set up. And here's what this looks like. Pretty basic little well, form, doesn't do anything yet. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start adding some more functionality to this and actually make this form do something. So to start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import some packages. So I'm going to grab the use Google recapture 
that's very important and I'm also going to import Axios so we're going to need that for communicating with our API route okay now that we have our imports what I'm going to do is I'm going to create our handle submit function so this will be an on submit for an on submit event for this form here so let's get started with that so I'm going to call the function handle submit and it will be an asynchronous function and oh, I'm also going to have to take in a form event as a parameter for that and so with that form event the first thing we'll do is we'll prevent the default action what is refreshing the browser and I will set submit equal to just an empty string once again in case we had a value in there already now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure that we are ready to execute our recaptcha so in order to do that I'll grab this line right here for my notes we have to use the use Google recaptcha hook that come that we imported before and here we're gonna get a function called execute recaptcha so first we want to make sure that we have this um, execute recaptcha function actually loaded before we're uh, trying to execute anything so we're just going to make sure that we have that by negating that the falsy value of that and then we're going to console.log I'll just say uh, not available to execute recapture for example something like that and then I'm just going to return to take us out of this function perfect so now what we need to do is we will do const g we'll call it g recapture token so what we're going to do now is we're going to get our token that we're going to send to our api route to verify that our recaptcha is properly set up so i'm going to do await and i will do execute recaptcha and then in here this is just for analytics sake we're going to give it a string so that we can look at our analytics later and see what it is i'm just going to um, and see where the calls are coming from i'm just going to call it inquiry submit pretty simple okay so now we have our recapture token that's processed on the client side so what we need to do now is we need to create an api route on our server where we can then verify this token so we're going to do that by using api routes within next.js so I'm going to go over to our app directory and I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it API. And then I'm going to create another folder in there called, we'll call it recaptcha submit. And inside of recaptcha submit, I'm going to create a file called route.ts. So the first thing that we're going to need is we're going to need the next response um, object from next server as well as we're going to also need Axios. Technically you could do all this without Axios, but I really like it. Um, then we're going to export an asynchronous function and it's going to be called post because we need to create a post request. And the parameters for this will be request and response. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get our secret key. Secret key. And this is going to be equal to process.env. What did I call it over here? I called it recapture secret key. Yeah. Okay. Process.env. Recapture secret key. Okay. We're going to have that. And then we're going to do uh, post data, what is going to be equal to the request and the JSON that's passed to it. Now we're going to do, we're going to destructure the uh, Google recapture token from that. So capture token, and this will be equal to, um, yeah, post data. Yep. And then from there, I'm going to create just a simple holding variable called res, and I'm going to then get our form I'm gonna copy this line from my notes because this is kind of long 
we're going to grab this form data, or my apologies where we're intending on sending this. So we have that. And then I am, we're going to have to do a try and catch block because here's where we're gonna make our Axios call to the, uh, to Google in order for them to verify this token. So what we're gonna do is we'll do res response, res whatever you wanna call it equals await axios dot post and in here we will we are sending the post request to this endpoint right here and then we have our we're going to give it the form data as an extension as well as then we are going to give it this header that we need to have this is just from the documentation don't don't worry about the details of it perfect so now that we have try we need catch obviously and what we will do here is we will return a next response response sorry, json and we will just say success equals false perfect so yeah we just want success true or false we're going to get a success as well as a score for a recapture back from this function so yeah um so we have the catch now now what we're going to do is i'm going to just copy this block and explain it because it's a little bit long to write but what we're doing here is we're saying does um, this res variable exist what it does da, is the data success so that true or false value that we were just talking about and is the score over 0.5 so recapture will return a score and it will be anywhere between 0 and 1 and the way that you should check if the um, user is a bot or an actual human being is if if they give a score of above 0.5 then that means that google believes that this result is a human so that's what we're going to use so yeah that's our entire route one other thing i realized that we have to do unfortunately is i have to change the name of what i called the variable because it pulls it by default so we just need to make this next public recapture site key instead of key that's just from the the npm package we installed hey ben from the future here just realized you don't need to actually change that uh variable's name you can make it whatever you want as long as it's passed to the recapture wrapper that we'll make in a couple minutes i just confused it with a different package my bad don't worry about that back to the video um now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our route and we're going to create the call to the root. So I'm, I'm gonna just grab a block of code here and I'll explain it briefly how it works. Um, so everything below this is what I just copy and pasted. So what we're doing is we're creating an uh, Axios response to um, this endpoint right here, what is our the value we created, recapture submit, and our data is a recapture token, and here are the headers we're gonna use. The headers in this case don't really matter because it's, with our, it's within our own application. And then what we're gonna do is, is response data a success, and if it's a success, then we're gonna just console log us to the console, and we're gonna say set submit, recapture verified, and form submitted, it else, so if it's not a success, then we're going to return, um, we're gonna say fail to verify recapture and you must be a robot. And we're also gonna console log the score to the console. Okay, so now the last thing that we need to do is we need to create our wrapper. And this is going to go right inside of our um, layout. We'll put it right inside of the body. We'll, we'll put it right around the children object here. So. I'm, I'm just gonna copy and paste this because it's uh, pretty straightforward. 
and if you've made it this far in the tutorial you probably understand this sort of thing already so I'm just gonna do Google capture wrapper tsx and paste this in and what we're gonna do is if, what, what we do here is we're getting this provider from the same package we had before and we're taking in a child of a react node what is again going to then be the children and we're getting our recaptcha key from our environment variables here and we're passing it in to the recapture provider it's we're, we're checking if it's not a null or not but it's ne it's never going to be nullable unless you mess something up within your configuration when you're deploying it on Vercel or something like that so we don't really need to worry about that and what we're going to do now is I'm just going to save that file and I'm going to come in our body here and Google capture wrapper and we will put it right in here and with that in mind now everything should work and we should be ready to go and I'm glad to see this right here so this little thing shows that our site is protected by reCAPTCHA and this also gives us enough information to know that we set it up correctly on the reCAPTCHA um, website there because it would it would be shouting at us right here saying that the domain's invalid or something like that so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in my name and email and then let's click submit and see what happens oh I made ignore that I made a bit of a mistake here I forgot to add the on submit call and that should be right here and that is handle submit so that's all we need to do and now it should work perfectly so I'll fill my data click submit let's see what we get so recapture verified and form submitted so let's check our console here and success with score of 0.9 I don't know if you can see that I'll zoom in a bit but yeah that we can we can see that our recaptcha is is now working correctly one thing that is a bit of a pain so if I go to analytics you're gonna see we're not gonna see it right now and you're not gonna see it because it is quite delayed and you're gonna see that the score for this site might not be accurate before running with some uh, with sufficient traffic and this is something you're gonna see until you make a few hundred requests on it you're gonna get a lot of scores of 0 0.9 what is kind of annoying, however, the thing is, is recapture, especially with the version three invisible version, you need to really calibrate it with your site. So if you can have the recapture wrapper right here, we have a surrounding our whole site. However, you probably don't want it on everything. You probably just want it on like maybe a login form and a sign up form, for example. Maybe you want to put it on your homepage too, so that recapture can get more data from the user and it will help you get rid of this little warning a bit quicker so yeah that's really all for now that's all that you need to do in order to set it up properly so i i hope you found this video insightful and it was quite helpful i'm sorry it took forever to make because i was getting a lot of emails and comments about setting this up i'm also going to still make the shopify headless um video series it's just a ton of work um, so you're going to just have to be a little bit patient with me. I'm getting a lot of comments about that too, but yeah, that'll be coming soon, hopefully within the next month or so. And I'm also waiting in case there's any new, um, templates or deployments from the Vercel team with Next.js 14. Cause the last one I did going over the pros and cons of using a headless architecture was with, uh, Next.js 13. So yeah, that's all. Hope you found this beneficial. And if you did, like and subscribe. And yeah, have a good one.